Well, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, good to be here again. Good to be chatting to you. Um, I hope you are starting to get into a rhythm. It, uh, it needs that, doesn't it? When everything changes like this, we, we feel out of place and out of rhythm, and we have to find a new rhythm to our daily life. So I hope you're finding a new rhythm and, um, and just making the most of the opportunity that we have. Uh, I want to share something again with you this morning. Um, what is in your hand? What is in your hand? And um, you know, sometimes situations can overwhelm us. Sometimes everything just seems to be too big for us to begin to get our head around it. And sometimes it just seems to be that big that anything that we do just doesn't seem to matter. And uh, we can't affect the whole in, in the little. You know, I remember some years ago going on a mission trip to um, Bombay, as it was now, because it's called Mumbai now, isn't it? And uh, Alison and myself went with 15 other people to uh, Mumbai and we landed there. And I don't think we had ever dropped into a situation like it ever before. Um, the journey from the airport into the uh, outskirts of the city where we were staying was one that was in total silence in the taxi that Alison and myself were in. I don't think we spoke to each other for 40 minutes, just trying to take in the sights, the sounds, the slums, the smell, everything just seemed to be wow. And, um, and one of the guys that had gone with us was the first paramedic that had been on site at the East Midlands air disaster. And he just began to cry, he just began to weep and he couldn't stop himself. And he suffered from, from what's known as culture shock. The situation was too big for him to be able to deal with. He, he was used to dealing with trauma, he was used to dealing with things, but this was just too big. He didn't know where to start, he didn't know what to do, and he just uh, suffered from culture shock. And on the second or third day, we had to send him home back to the UK, um, suffering from culture shock, unable to deal with the surroundings. And I guess this situation can feel a little bit like that, can't it? What can we do to change what's happening? You know, it can all be a bit too much for us. It can be overwhelming. It can overwhelm our senses. It can overwhelm our thinking. It can overwhelm our whole being if we, if we let it. You know, you might be locked in. Uh, you might be trying to look after your children who have been sent home from school. And thinking, Lord, what can I do? What can I do? Dealing with frustrated people. You know, there are a lot of frustrated people around at the moment. Uh, they, they just are lost. Working, you might be working on the front line with patients and them to deal with people uh, that, that are fearful and anxious and coming in with different things and some coming in with this coronavirus and wow or well, trying to keep working trying to deal with life and all its complications just at this moment and it just all seems too much you know there are some times in the bible when it all seemed too much moses <laughs> saw a burning bush and he went up to the burning bush and, and, and in the midst of the bush was God. 
And God asked him to go back to Egypt and to lead his people out of Egypt. And for Moses, that was all a bit too much. It, it was all a bit too much. God, you can't, no, you can't lead me. I can't do this. I can't do that. And God asked him this question. He says, Moses, what is in your hand? And Moses looked at his hand, and in his hand was a shepherd's crook, a piece of wood. And to Moses, that's all it was, was a piece of wood. But to God, it became the symbol of deliverance, through which God would reveal his power and his might to Pharaoh and the people of Egypt. You see, what was in Moses' hand was used by God to do something incredible. You know, one day in the Bible there was a, a big crowd and a little boy. <laughs> and uh, the crowd had been listening to Jesus. 5,000 plus. Some, est some estimates say because it says 5,000 men that there were potentially 5,000 women there as well, and children. So there could be well over 10,000, 12,000 people. But let's go with the 5,000, shall we? And Jesus says to his disciples, uh, they've been here all day, come on, let's feed them. And the disciples look at Jesus like, you what? Sorry? How? With what? If, if, if we had all of this, this money, we'd never be able to do it. And a little boy came up with five loaves and two fishes. And he offered what he had in his hand. And Jesus took it. And he blessed it. And he began to break it. And he broke it. And he broke it. And he broke it. And, broke it. and they fed the whole of the people with these five loaves and two fishes. And the word of God tells us they had twelve baskets left over after you see, what was impossible, the disciples, was more than possible for God. What, what, what is in your hand? What do you have that God can take and do wonders with? And you say, Dave, I don't have anything. But what is in your hand? is what God is saying to you today. You see, Joshua said, Here I am, Lord, all the available. Isaiah said, Lord, send me. Jeremiah said, Lord, I'm just a youth. <laughs> Abraham said, I'm too old. Peter said, I'm just a fisherman. <laughs> and yet God used each and every one of them to do something incredible for his glory. The task seems too big. What do you have to give? What can you give that you have to Jesus? that he can do something incredible with. And I'm not talking about money, no. No. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about love. <laughs> I'm talking about the ability to encourage each other. The ability to pray for other people. For our nation. For the world talking about a phone call maybe a letter you know it's lovely to receive a letter isn't it I think letters are so personal they, they speak very personal from a person's heart or maybe a kind word maybe a bit of shopping for somebody else that can't go themselves You know, the Word of God says this, that by this shall all men know that you are, my, you are my disciples, that you love one another. 
You see, God takes what we offer and uses it for his glory. <laughs> and, um, you know, what do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? I want to say that each, and each one of us has something that we can offer to God and say, here, Lord, use this. Here, Lord, take this. Here, Lord, help me to be an encourager. Help me to pray. Help me to whatever. What can you do to help someone else? <laughs> Lord, wow. Well, you're able, you're able to take each and every one of us and use us for your glory and for your honour and for your kingdom. Help us, Lord, to offer what we have in our hand to you to bless one another. We pray at this time. Amen. I want to just say that um, on Sunday coming up, we've got a special guest speaker. Uh, we've arranged for this uh, minister to come before all of this kicked off and so I've asked him whether he would share with us on Sunday so he's going to do that it's the Reverend uh, Phil Starbuck and uh, he used to play for Nottingham Forest football when Brian Clough was there some of you will remember Brian Clough and then he went on to have a career with Mayor Huddersfield and I think Sheffield Wednesday he's a great guy, a great friend of mine uh, and he, he'll come and share a great word with us on Sunday so make sure you tune in on Sunday and uh, we'll have a great time. Got a few more days before then, guys. Keep safe. Keep safe. Lord, bless these folks. Lord, put your hand upon them. Lord, cause your angels to station around them and protect them, I pray in Jesus' name. Wherever you are listening to us in the world, praise God.